protein digestion and absorption. The said processes can also be identified as the protein catabolism. And the very end goal for these processes is for the protein nutrient to be extracted that is in order to suffice the continuing body need for protein and to sustain the functions such as for the growth and development for the structural body integrity for the formation of catalysts such as an enzyme and an antibodies for immunity and for the gene regulation and DNA restoration, the transport function and the storage function of the protein. In the digestion process, the protein solid food source must be further digested into a biteable size. And through this, it must be transformed into a masticated particles. And then from there, a polypeptide chain must be transformed further into an absorbable form of amino acids such as an individual amino acid either a dipeptide or a tripeptide before it enters the stomach and the small intestine the digestion in the stomach the illustration at the left represents the main site of digestion mainly from the stomach and the small intestine and the accessory organs of digestion in the stomach the protein polypeptide chain are expected to cleave or disbond to a level of dipeptide or a tripeptide at the right upper side is a polypeptide chain that will enter the stomach as a semi-solid particle as it enters now and at the right lower is a magnified microscopic gastric mucosa with a bili from here the release of gastric juices will begin. The pepsinogen will be released by the chip cell in an inactive form. And the hydrogen ion will be released by a parietal cell. And more will take place. And together with the action of hydrochloric acid and the activated pepsin we must take note that hydrochloric acid has a pH of 2 which is highly acidic and this will protect the body from invading microorganism as it comes with the food particle now with the combination of hydrochloric acid and pepsin the protein macromolecules will degrade to micromolecules and as the food is being churned or the chyme is being produced the next final digestion and absorption will take place at the small intestine the absorption in the small intestine as from the stomach 20% of catabolism has taken place and at the small intestine the rest is expected at the left 
are indispensable accessory organs of digestion. And one of that is the pancreas. Now from here, an inactive protease will be released. Or pancreatic proteases will be released, also known as the cymogen. Proteases and cymogen are both collective term for pancreatic juices that are released by pancreas. And by looking at the left side, at the pancreas, you can notice a globular white structure. And these are what we call the acinar cell, which releases proteases and cymogen via exocytosis. Now, it is expected that proteolytic activation will happen. That is the inactive form of pancreatic juices at the left, namely the trypsinogen, the chymotricinogen, and the procarboxypeptidase are in inactive form. And this needs to be transformed to active form. And by the action of enterokinase, which, when, which can be found in the duodenum, when combined together, enterokinase and trypsinogen will come up with a trypsin as an active form. Enterokinase will bind with chymotricinogen and will form chymotrysin and enterokinase will bind with procarboxypeptidase to form a carboxypeptidase. All of these proteases or cymogen are now in an active form and they all have an alkaline pH, pH 8, pH 8 and pH 7.4, which is separate and distinct from the pH of hydrochloric acid, which is 2, from the stomach. And by looking at the left side, the active form will now be ready to be released into the duodenum as the next step will happen. Further, there are different types of proteases or cymogen. Endopeptidase and the exopeptidase from the word itself endo meaning the cleavage will happen at the chain in the middle chain of the amino acid. And the exopeptidase, the cleave will expected to happen at both ends. As if you may remember, in a polypeptide chain, there is an N-terminal at the left, which the amine group is expected. And at the right are the carboxyl group, from which carboxypeptidase will break the carboxyl group. And aminopeptidase will break the amine group. And they are both called the exopeptidase. The absorption process. Absorption process is expected to happen at the minute blood vessel that is within the bili of a small intestine. And here is where it's going to happen. There are processes that are involved in the absorption process. And these are the active transport, the sodium and amino acid transport, and the facilitated diffusion. All of the mentioned processes will have to cross the concentration gradient and will have to expend an ATP for the absorption of a now clip polypeptide chain. At the left, you may see the open abdomen. 
are illustrations of vessels, the abdominal vessels from enteric vessel forming the portal hepatic vein, where all of the nutrients are headed to the liver for further metabolism. Distribution from a pool of protein nutrients. As all the protein nutrients are delivered to the liver via the portal hepatic vein and the liver being prioritized as the receiver of the fresh pool protein nutrients will then be created and liver will use the amino acid for several purposes as been mentioned in the beginning such as the growth and development of the body and structural body integrity in the formation of catalyst in the form of enzyme as an immune defense by the formation of antibody the gene and the dna regulation the transport purpose and the storage purpose of amino acid. Most importantly, amino acid will be used to synthesize a new protein. And the bulk and most will be in the plasma protein. That means it has to go with the blood. And this will be distributed to the tissues. And the formation of a new protein will depend on the specific needs of the body, which will depend on the demands and function of the tissues of the different organs. Body proteins are constantly renewed, not unlike the carbohydrates that can store the glycogen. Older proteins are broken down into pre-amino acid and recycled. Proteins cannot be stored for later use. Once the cell needs it, only then it will be produced. Excess amino acid will be degraded and used for energy. It will be converted to glucose or a fatty acid once there comes a shortage. And a shortage of energy are during the prolonged exercise or during the expanded fasting. Amino acid waste are being deaminated or transaminated and that it produces a keto acid. Some are directly deaminized. Keto acid are converted into acetyl-CoA or the pyruvate that is for the next ATP production. However, one thing must be remembered about excessive intake of protein. If protein is too much, then it will overwhelm the kidney and it can cause kidney failure. Once again, we have reached the end of discussion. Let us assess and check your comprehension. You may pause the video for a good glance. Enjoy studying. And I hope this material is of help. All the best to you. That's all folks, this has been your nurse Radiologico Guru saying thank you for watching and enjoy studying.